want to go home. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Canada. It is the most amazing place, the amazing country that it is. Um, but I've been away from home for two months now, bar a few crazy days in between. And I'll be honest, I just want to get back to normality. And I just want to get back home. Okay, thank you so much. Cheers, have a good one. Bye bye. Today though, I'm gonna be home just that little bit earlier because today, well, I'm flying BA. Hello. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna to wait to help this gentleman here if he needs any help. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah. That's your ticket, sir. What, what is it you need, sorry? Needs a the locator form, okay, the, the oh, one on the phone that we did, yeah. So that's it? No, oh, yes. You need your boarding pass, yeah. <laughs> you won't get very far without that. Oh, I want to go here. Oh, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. When you get to London, yeah. you'll need that for yeah, the next no, flight. Cool. Yeah, and you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I have made it. You've made it. With yeah. your help. <laughs> <laughs> That's no problem at all. So reason number one I love flying BA, just seeing that livery arriving at the airport. You see the thing is, when you arrive at the airport after weeks away in some far flung corner of the world and you see that livery pulling onto the gate behind you, well that's when you realise you're a lot closer to home than you thought you were. Isn't it beautiful? Hey, right. <laughs> yes, oh yes, sorry. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, have a good one. So now it's time to see reason number two I love flying B8, that feeling of home as soon as you meet the cabin crew. Hi, are you all right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and of course the iconic BA boarding music. And then there's the seat, the BA Club World seat. I mean, it's not fancy these days by any stretch of the imagination they've got the newer club suites on some of their aircraft but for the most part well you're going to get this but this was actually a revolutionary design when it first came out this is the world's first ever life lab business class seat um no other airline had done this and ba were the first to do it and the design actually i think is still today an incredible one i know you've got that weird kind of four people in the middle thing and some of the window seats can't get out when the other person up there has their um, feet flat in the flatbed position. It's got its flaws, but um, it's still really comfortable and private. And once we've taken off and this thing goes up, I've got my own little booth, my own little cubby, my own little suite. Years before any other, any other airlines did this in business class anywhere in the world, it's just, it's just brilliant.
My route home tonight then took us northeast out of Vancouver, crossing Alberta, Saskatchewan and the Hudson Bay before flying over southern Greenland. From there we crossed the Atlantic to Northern Ireland before dropping down into London. Flight time tonight was 8 hours and 11 minutes, cruising at 37 and 39,000 feet. Alright then, on the way back to London, on the BA777, that's the other thing uh, about BA and flying BA. Their crews, they're just so friendly and lovely. I don't think I've ever met a member of BA cabin crew who wasn't absolutely lovely in all of my flights. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just something about that familiar accent and that familiar sort of cultural thing that you've got when you're having a chat with a BA flight attendant. I don't know. But they're always unbelievably nice on every single flight. And that's not just up here in business class. I've had that in economy. I've had it up in first class on the planes that have got that as well. They're just genuinely lovely people. Um, and I think that's something that BA do really well is giving you that really sort of friendly, familiar customer service element too. The next thing I like about BA of course, Speedbird IPA. You can only get it on British Airways so you can't even buy it in the shops. It's really nice. Food's turned up. Dinner time. Gone for the beef fillet tonight. British beef fillet. Love it. Um, and surprisingly, a lot of airlines have gone for this whole like let's do everything in a plastic container with a lid on and everything um, in the name of COVID. But BA, well, they've not done that, and it's a proper full meal. And if anything probably slightly better than before because it's all coming out at once rather than having to do like three different services and taking kind of hours to get through the cabin but there we go looking forward to this looks really delicious There we have it, our own little private suite. This is the oldest or one of the oldest aircraft in BA's fleet and yet we've still got this amazing private suite configuration. Like how many airlines were doing this 20 years ago, giving people private suites? Even today, this is a really nice product. It's not been um, upgraded at all in the 20 years or so since it was delivered um, to BA this aircraft. It's still got the old in-flight entertainment system up here. Very old fashioned. It's not got any USB ports or anything like that, but that's okay because it's still a really cool suite to sit in or to lay in or to lounge in um, for a flyer like this even if it is one of the oldest aircraft in the fleet that hasn't been upgraded it's still really really nice and even compared to most airlines today you've probably got more privacy in this suite than you would have in a lot of other products even BA's club suite with the little slidey door thing that they've brought in I have to say I prefer this I'm going to put the seat into the life flat bed position now. Remembering that BA were the first ever airline to feature a flatbed seat in business class. This is the first one. And this is one of the first aircraft that had it fitted as well. Oh. Back in 2000 when it was delivered. Um, and again, very, very comfortable. Oh. I can lay back here in my completely life flat bed. It's comfy. I'm six foot four and I've got the space here to be able to relax and rest. 
just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'm going to go to sleep now. When I wake up, hopefully, we'll not be far from landing back home in the UK. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Well, good morning. Oof. Just been woken up by <laughs> the captain telling us that we are on approach to Heathrow. Um, <laughs> I fell asleep over Edmonton and I've literally woken up over the Midlands as we make our approach. So I'm going to have to start, um, yeah, getting ready for our arrival into London. I um, slept like an absolute baby on this flight. I must have needed it. Um, <laughs> clearly. That's so funny. Um, so anyway, we're going to be landing pretty soon at Heathrow. Um, Oh, what a view out of the window. So despite the fact that I was asleep throughout all of the breakfast service, they've just very kindly gone and made me some breakfast so I can trough it down before we land. As you see, this service is just amazing. I've got a nice mozzarella and pesto breakfast sandwich with a cup of coffee to get down as quickly as possible before we get to London. <laughs> I better eat up. right down there. That's home. That's Britain, right outside my window. And right just there, well, there you've got the blue engine of BA with the Rolls Royce on the side. That engine there was built about 20 miles from my house. You know, we're back. We're back in the UK. And it feels good. See, that's the thing about British Airways. They may not be the best airline in the world. I don't even know if they're necessarily the best airline in Britain. If there's other airlines out there that have got a much better hard product on board. But to me, British Airways, well, they're like that old settee in your living room. You know, it might look a bit battered around the edges. It might not be in the best of shape, but it's comfy. And when you sit down on that settee, well, you know you're at home. <sighs> BA are that old settee, in my book. Always there, always dependable, and you always know what you're going to get. Here's the other thing about BA, how easy it can be to get a good deal with them, especially when you have the air miles to burn. My flight tonight was retailing as over three grand when booked directly, but using some air miles I could have got it as cheap as less than £100. In fact I opted to pay £900 and use a few less air miles which works out to around US$1200 or 20 pence per mile, plus 18,000 Avios. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to Logan Eco's Terminal 5. The local time here in London is 22 minutes past one in the afternoon. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Cheers, guys. See you later. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye. As always, I'd like to say a big thanks to my patrons. You can join them at the link on the screen now for access to my WhatsApp group, live weekly Zoom calls with me, and much more.
layout. Oh, yeah. Let's stick it through. It's come through. Thank you very much, you too. Have a good trip. Right, back home in the UK, or in London at least, and we've got a few days here, and Rach is with me! Yay! Um, so yeah, back home, uh, an amazing trip over in Canada, uh, done some amazing things, check out the rest of the videos if you've not seen them already, uh, what I've been doing up there, some amazing stuff, um, and who knows where we'll go to next time, I don't know, do you? No, I'm not, not even thought plan. about it. Maybe we should plan. Right at this moment in time, I have no intention of setting foot on board a plane for a long while. Um, <laughs> but I know that in two weeks' time I will change my mind and I will be trying to sort something else out. So stay tuned and you'll find out exactly where I end up on my next adventure. But in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>